Hi folks, this is Jake from Tier 3 Tactical. Today we're going to be talking about how to combine cardio and strength training. This is going to be a research review. So it's not going to be just my opinion as a coach or a functional fitness guy for over 10 plus years. We're actually going to look at what some researchers have found out and some best practices um, from the work they've done. If you're anything like me, you've probably wondered how to best combine cardio and strength training. I can tell you from experience that most athletes actually get this wrong. Um, this is kind of a legacy of getting all their fitness advice from magazines or Facebook or what have you. But this video is going to cover um, an excellent inf infographic I've created that kind of gives you the best practices for pairing cardio and strength training so you don't lose muscle mass or that you can actually lose some uh fat as well. And we're going to talk about the types of cardio that promote fat loss, um, the duration that you need to do cardio to do that, and how to avoid excessive muscle loss and things like that. There are a couple reasons why you might want to do this. First and foremost is to lose body fat. Research consistently shows that athletes that um, do both strength training and some form of cardiovascular training lose more fat than um, athletes doing either or. The second reason a person might want to do this is for performance reason. If you're into functional fitness, you're going to find that your conditioning is drastically impacted by your uh, aerobic capacity. Your ability to recover is, uh, is impacted by that. And for folks that just care about bodybuilding or strength training, you're also going to find having more aerobic fitness and general cardiovascular ability is going to increase your ability to lift and recover um, in between sets, you're going to find that, you know, if you're lifting really heavy, you may not need five minutes in between sets. Maybe you can do two or three. And over time, that's going to add up to more volume that you can do in the gym, which increases the amount of muscle mass and strength that you can gain. But here's some of the key points that we're going to talk about. And it's going to be covered in the infographic. So performing cardio and strength training has little to no effect on upper body size or strength. Longer durations of endurance training are associated with decreases in strength and power. Running with strength training is the most effective pairing to reduce fat mass. And lastly, cycling with strength training is the most effective pairing to maintain strength and muscle mass. And we'll see it's not just cycling, um, but it's any type of cardio that is closer to a weightlifting movement and, and um, is going to... Is going to keep uh, the maximum amount of muscle mass. So this could be a C2 rower, it could be an assault bike, things that are closer to kind of a strength movement where you're using your muscles rather than um, just jogging, which I mean, of course, it does use your muscles, but it is uh, more dissimilar from weightlifting than, say, rowing is. So let's talk about um, the infographic that we see here. The very first bullet point that we see upper body is least affected by combining cardio and strength training and you can see in the chart here you kind of have to zoom in but I recommend you you click on the link in the description below and that's going to take you to the article so you can actually get all these details um, but you can see in the, the chart here that body fat um, is most reduced whenever uh, there's concurrent training when concurrent training when in research parlance is strength training and some type of of cardio okay um, and you can also see some other factors like lower body hypertrophy um, when you just do endurance you're not getting any you just do strength sure you'll get some when you put it together there is some reduction which is to be expected but upper body really isn't as affected as much so uh, we can see that you know, common sense says if you do some cardio you will gain some cardiovascular fitness but you will do that at the expense of maybe creating some muscle mass your body only has so much resources developed to physiologically changing uh, the cells in your body, either creating more uh, red, red blood cells or creating more arteries or creating more actual muscle tissue. You can't do everything at once. Next on down, we see that running causes the most fat loss and it most impacts strength and hypertrophy. Uh, you can see on that portion of the chart that they are comparing running concurrent and cycling concurrent as well as just strength. As you can see, um, for any measure of strength, strength training, 
you do, you you know you do the you build the most strength and the most muscle mass. Um, your VO2 max changes almost none at all. Um, but if you put both together in especially running concurrent with strength training, you lose the most fat mass. The next chart is key. So I've seen a lot of bodybuilders getting ready for competitions or just trying to get ready for, for beach season, um, doing way too much cardio, Car hour of cardio, hour and a half of cardio every day. And that's not what we need. Uh, you don't need to do that. You need to manipulate your nutrition intake and the cardio and the strength training so that you are in a deficit, an appropriate amount of deficit to lose the right amount of body fat, not too fat, uh, fast and not too slow. So if we look at this chart, we can see that the amount of hypertrophy and the amount of strength that they gain, so hypertrophy is another term for muscle mass or gaining muscle mass, it does go down. So at the, at the one day a week on the left side of the chart, it does reduce a little bit. Your power and your strength do go down as well as your hypertrophy. But as we increase to four days a week um, and all the way out to like five days a week, we, we see a drastic reduction in the amount of strength and muscle mass you can gain. So it seems like from examining this chart, the sweet spot's gonna be two to three days a week of cardio. So that's something to keep in mind. Next, we're talking about the session duration. Same kind of chart um, at the lowest session duration um, in the 20 to 30 minute range, we see some reduction in strength, power, and muscle size. But if you continue that out to like an hour a week or more, you're looking at almost no strength and muscle mass gain. So if you're doing an hour a day of cardio, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to gain no strength or muscle mass. And lastly, the maximum fat loss takes place at heart rates greater than 80%. And you can see this on this chart. It's kind of a, almost like a hockey stick shape chart. It really takes off at 80% or above. You see a big increase in fat loss. Um, the caveat here is obviously we can't maintain that kind of effort for very long durations. And it is very difficult. That's why you see a lot of uh, other research indicating that high intensity interval training uh, does provide uh, quite a strong stimulus for fat loss. And that is something I do recommend um, for strength athletes, whether it's bodybuilding or lifter or even functional fitness athletes. Um, practically speaking, as a coach, this is one thing I do see people get wrong a lot. So they're engaged in functional fitness. They have a lot of lifting. They have wads. They have metcons. That's a lot of volume. That's a lot of recovery that you need to improve from those sessions. And then they're like, well, I need to work on my cardio. So they hit really hard interval training. They're hitting Tabatas. They're hitting uh, EMOMs and all kinds of stuff really hard. This this type of training is hard to recover from. It does use your muscle mass. It is more similar to lifting than it is to cardio. Think about this. Is it easier to recover from a 20-minute jog at a conversational pace, or is it uh, harder to recover from hard sprint efforts, 100 meter or 50 meter sprints. I can tell you anyone who's done that will find out that sprinting leaves you very sore for several days. And it's very similar in, in terms of muscular requirements to a hard leg day. So that requires resources to recover from. So don't discount easy cardio from uh, your cardio and strength training plan. Easy cardio requires almost no resources to recover from. It burns extra calories, which helps you get into the deficit, and is easy to recover from. So if you're hitting high heart rates in your, in your wad and you're strength training a lot and you're doing a lot of volume, easy cardio is probably the best method for you to lose a little bit of fat or add some aerobic capacity. That being said, of course, you can't do only one type of cardio and expect to be a, a very well-rounded athlete. So make sure you click on that link uh, below, and it's going to take you to the article where you can see these charts are kind of small in the infographic, but they're much bigger in the article. You can see them exactly, and I've linked to the research as well, so you have a good idea um, of what we're getting at. But the long story short, just to recap, we want to keep our cardio sessions to two to three sessions a week, 30 minutes or less if possible, and we should include some high heart rate cardio for maximum fat loss. 
We also can um, keep in mind that running will burn more fat, but it is harder on to gain lower body muscle mass. So if that's not an issue for you, running 20 to 30 minutes a day, two to three times a week is probably going to be the best method for you to lose some, some fat loss, and including some hard intervals in at least one of those sessions might be good as well. If you are worried about lower body strength or muscle mass, then maybe do something like a salt bike, rowing, or um, cycling. Something like that is more similar to strength training. If you like this kind of video, we'll be doing more throughout the year. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I would also ask you just to share it with somebody who um, might benefit from this kind of knowledge. If you know they've made these mistakes, and I know I have in the past, um, send it to them and hopefully they can kind of get back on a, a little bit more scientifically sound track and make some increased gains.